Welcome to another training module in the Xeris Certified Wireless Technician Certification Program. In today's module, I will show you how to manage guest access to your wireless network with the Guest Access Portal in XMS Cloud. Does your company provide Wi-Fi network access to guests, contractors, or temporary employees? Is the task of managing non-employee network access delegated to an already overburdened IT department. Well, managing your guest access to your wireless network has never been easier using the guest access portal integrated in Xeris's XMS Cloud. In this module, I will show you how to create a self-registration portal, a guest ambassador portal, and I'll show you how you can pre-register a guest on the guest access portal. To get started on the first portal, click Guests. Next, click New Portal. And as you can see on this page, you can choose between a self-registration portal or a guest ambassador portal. With the self-registration portal, a guest will sign up to use the guest access portal with an online form that the guest fills out and submits. With a guest ambassador portal, a company employee, such as a company sponsor or receptionist or maybe even security personnel, will register the guest. This first portal will be a self-registration portal. So let me first give the portal a name and I'm going to call it Guest Access Portal Self-Reg. And I'll give it a description. And then click the self-registration button. The first step in configuring the self-registration guest access portal is to configure settings such as the session expiration period, the session timeout period, and whether or not a sponsor is required. And finally, you can set the landing page that the guest will be redirected to after completing the registration process. Let's review each of these options starting with the session expiration page. On the session expiration page, you will set the length of time the guest has access to the Wi-Fi network before they must register again. You have the flexibility to set the length to hours, days, a month, or you can set the access period to never expire. Now you can choose whether or not you want to configure a session timeout period. This is different from the session expiration period in that this will set how long a period of inactivity must pass before a guest session will time out and forces the guest to log in again. The guest will not have to re-register unless their session expiration limit has been reached also. So I'll turn this on and now you can see we need to set the time threshold before a guest is logged out and I'm just going to leave it at two hours. The next feature we can configure is whether or not we want to require that somebody in the company be a sponsor for the guest. And we'll say yes. Now we'll need to select the sponsor type. We can either select manual or auto. In manual, a sponsor must confirm the guest before they can access the wireless network. And in auto, Guests will not have to wait for an email confirmation from the sponsor before being granted access to the network as long as the sponsor's email address is in this box. We'll select auto confirmation and then we'll enter the sponsor's email address. And click add. And then finally, at the bottom of the page, we can go ahead and configure the URL or the web address the guest will be redirected to once they have completed the registration process. Now it's time to configure the look and feel of the different forms and web pages used during the registration process. On this page, we'll enter the name of the company, we'll select a logo to use on the forms and web pages, we'll select a color scheme, choose whether or not to list the company's terms of use policy during the registration process, and finally, we can add text to the different forms and web pages. The first step is to enter the company's name. So let's do that.
and then we can select the logos. We give you the options of uploading the company logo from your local system or enter a URL to access an internal image or you can select an existing image which has already been uploaded. I'll select the Xeris logo and click OK. Next I can select a color scheme. I can choose to allow sign in with Google Plus or Facebook. If I wanted to insert my company's terms of use policy during the registration process, I will need to click the Enable Terms of Use checkbox. Later on, I'll have the opportunity to insert the actual policy on the Terms of Use webpage, which I'll show you in just a moment. Now let's look at the different forms and web pages and their configure options that are used during the registration process. I'll start off with the Welcome page. This is the first page presented to the guest when they try to access the guest portal. Notice that the first time guests can select the register as a guest button and guests that have already registered and are still within the session expiration period have a button they can use to log into the portal. The next page is the login page. Guests that have already registered and are still within the session expiration period will be presented with this page. Notice the register button for guests that have not yet registered or, or for those guests that have reached the session expiration time limit. The next page is the registration form. The guest will enter their name, email address, mobile phone number, and the sponsor's email address. They also have the option of reviewing the company's terms of use policy. The next page is the terms of use policy. Simply copy and paste your company's terms of use policy into this page and it will be presented to the guests during the registration process. The next page is the email that gets sent to the guest as the next step in the registration process. This email will contain the username and password that the guest will use to access the guest portal. Notice that it also informs the guest when their access will expire and that they may need to log in after so many hours. And finally, this is the registration successful page presented to the guest once they have successfully registered and logged into the guest access portal. The next step in configuring the guest access portal is to assign the different SSIDs that you want this portal to be active on. So we'll click the SSIDs button and then click assign SSIDs. And now I can choose the SSIDs and drag and drop them over into this box or I can click the move all button if I need to. And then I just click the assign SSIDs button. And finally, let me click the Save All button. So that completes the self-registration guest access portal. Now I'll create a guest ambassador access portal. So I'll go back to Guests and click New Portal. Now I'll give this portal a name. I'll call it Guest Access Portal Ambassador and click the Guest Ambassador button. Remember, with this type of guest access portal, you will assign a company employee, such as a receptionist or a company sponsor, to register the guest for wireless network access. I'll give this portal a description. You'll notice that you have fewer configuration options on the Guest Ambassador Portal. There are no registration pages. This is because the company will have an employee register the guest as opposed to the guest self-registering for network access. We can set the session expiration period. And again, on this page, we'll set the length of time the guest has access to the wireless network before they have to register again. We have the flexibility to set the length to hours, days, or month, or you can even set the access period to never expire. Now we can choose whether or not we want to configure a session timeout period. 
This is different from the session expiration period in that this will set how long a period of inactivity must pass before a guest session will time out and force the guest to log in again. Now you'll configure the look and feel of the different forms and web pages used during the registration process. On this page, you'll enter the name of the company, select a logo to use on the forms and web pages, and select a color scheme. Now let's review the different forms and web pages and their configuration options that are used during the registration process. Again, notice that there are not as many pages available as there are in the self-registration portal because a company employee must register the guest for the Wi-Fi network access. The login page is the page that the guest will use to log into the portal. The guest will use the credentials that he received in an email or a text message when the company sponsor registered the guest. The last page is the email page. This is the email that gets sent to the guest when the company sponsor registers the guest. This email will contain the username and password that the guest will use to access the guest portal. Notice that it also informs the guest when their access will expire and that they may need to log in after so many hours. The next step in configuring the guest access portal is to assign the different SSIDs that you want this portal to be active on. So click the SSIDs button. Then click the Assign SSIDs button. And then you can simply drag and drop the SSID over into the Guest Ambassador Portal box. Or you can click the Move All link and that will move all the SSIDs over into the Guest Access Portal box. Now click Assign SSIDs. And to save this portal, click the Save All button. We also give you the option of pre-registering a guest so that they will not have to register themselves when they wish to access the Wi-Fi network. When you do this, the guest will be sent an email or text message with their login credentials so that they can bypass the registration process when accessing the guest portal. To pre-register a guest, click the Guest tab. Now you can add a guest by clicking the New Guest button. You'll need to add the guest name and the email address. If you would like the guest to receive his password via a text message in addition to an email, click the Receive Password via Text Message box. When you do that, the next step is to select the guest country. Then put the mobile phone number in. You'll need to select the guest mobile carrier, and then you can put in the guest company name. And when you're finished, click the Save and Send Password button. And this is what the message will look like. It'll have the password, the email address, and also the phone number. If you would like to, you can also choose to print this message out to hard copy. And now you can manage the guest accounts on this page. You can edit the guest's general information. You can reset and send the password. You can remove this guest's Wi-Fi's access. And you can delete this guest account. On the general information page, you can review and edit any of the guest's information. You can also see the state of the account. You can see when it was created and when it expires. There are also buttons that allow you to reset and resend the account password and remove access to the wireless network. If necessary, you can change the guest name or maybe edit the mobile carrier or mobile phone number. Next, click the Reset and Send New Password button. On this page, you can reset and send the new password to the guest. Click the Reset and Send Password button again. The new password will be emailed to the guest. You can also choose to print or resend the new password in a text message. You can choose to remove the guest's wireless access. And finally, you can delete the guest account altogether. 
This concludes this Xeris Wireless Certified Technician module where we covered the guest access portal in XMS Cloud. Thank you and have a great day.